uh, the, you know, the trick that a lot of people play, I think, is that I actually filmed that video at double speed and then slowed it down. Ah, that's why it yes. looks. That's why it looks so moody. Um, I, it, I, I, it's actually only about sixty seconds of footage of me like rapid fire singing the song. So like, I'm when I filmed it, I'm going, and then it was over. <laughs> but then. There we go. Let's invite my guest today. All right. Invite. Perfect. There. Now I can see you. Welcome to my uh, the fun part fancy is kitchen. I'm currently looking at. Yeah. Well, welcome to room six. Um, question. Uh, first of all, for those of you that don't, you know, know how to read your the, the screen, this is the uh, Bright Kelly. All the way from Philly. Yes, sir. 1030 over here. Um, yeah, and I appreciate it, you, know, you, know, you uh, taking the time tonight. I, I know you got you still got the little one there probably keeping you awake. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm in the kitchen and not in the, in the recording studio, which is six feet from where she sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> well, Santa was not kind enough to bring me a job hunt for Christmas. So uh, I've been doing interviews in the uh, the dining room. Because uh, I, I, yeah. I, my wife works literally right next to me, and I can't be doing it here. Um, well, unfortunately, it looks like for whatever reason, it's it, it's. I got a laptop over here that's also simultaneously streaming over to the Purple Lap and the Tube of You, and it's yeah. uh, it logged me out. So bear with me a second. I was waiting for some technical no to difficulty, nervous. and here it is. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna say screw it. And we're good. Are you seeing nice. just you and me on the screen, or are you also seeing like four other invite boxes? I'm seeing all the empty boxes for requests. Awesome. I, I, as far as I know, that's normal. Oh, is it? But okay. I don't know what your viewers are seeing. Uh, that's what like, I was it's hoping. It's possible to... that your viewers are seeing the normal, just the two of us. Well, that's what I was hoping to find. But... Hey, somebody watching down, down below, tell us. You should just see us, right? It should just be the two of us on their screens. Notionally, yeah. I think. <laughs> I'm going to have somebody check it on my end. Yeah, on TikTok. Right on. And I'm trying to, like, turn off the, all the Wi-Fi from different... Hey! Thank you, Ty Brooks. Is that your hey, hey. wife, Ty Brooks? Nope. Nope. My my well, wife thanks, is Ty now... Brooks. Someone. Okay. Room someone just LV sent, us, uh, sent me life. something. Cool. Gotta love when that happens. Here, I can do it for you if you want. Yeah. Um, oh, that, that's I'm my a wife professional. just joined in the chat below. <laughs> and so am I. So professional. I don't even have shoes on. Oh yeah, no, they're seeing the little, they're seeing the, the extra request screens and everything just like, just like you and I are. So just so you know, your viewers are seeing what we're seeing. So you might have to do a crop later to just cross awesome. the two of Does us Does anybody out of know how to get rid of it? No. <laughs> uh, does anybody I'm positive know how to get that, rid of it? I'm positive Enhanced. that it has to be you. I know that. <laughs> I know that you have to be the one who does it. That's all I can tell you. Right. Um, wait a minute. Is there, I thought I could no full amount screen. Of... Little square hey, thing. there you go. You made, you made me bigger. Oh. That's a start. Well, I just made you bigger. Yeah, you can I'll always you can anyway. always crop these out. You can always crop all these out right in the Final Cut later. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Listen, as long as the questions I'm are hoping, incisive and deeply yeah, if anybody personal, can, you're going to be can fine. Put it in the comments. Awesome, and now it's back to half and half. Yeah. Um, well then, uh, yeah, this is it's frustrating, and yet I'm excited. This is fun for me. I'm, I'm not going to waste too much more time. I just. You're good. Where's the freaking just full screen option? Maybe, oh, sorry. Uh, is it responding All to right. just like little, uh, little gestures? I don't. <laughs> this is it. This is this is great. This is no. So, it, it, this, it's pulling up various things. I, you should leave some of this in when you post the real the the, the video later. 
when you like post it to YouTube, you should you should right. leave some of this shit in. This is great. Or do like a gag reel of you and I just being like not even boomers, like pre boomer, just I don't know how to technology. Eh? <laughs> how do I get lit, to the internet? Lit, fam. <laughs> oh, Google. That, that hurt my heart a little bit. Hey Google, yeah, how I, do I, I Facebook? Okay, Google, why clouds? <laughs> That's so, awesome. Well, let me let me officially welcome you to to room six. Clink. Nice to be here. Mm. Got the room six whiskey here. And um, are you seeing me backwards, or are you seeing right ways with up? You're backward. I see. Uh, I see six more. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> TikTok keeping it consistent. Oh, so yeah, yeah it's room is, six, uh, and difficult. it's uh, making. Yeah, it's make music, not excuses. It's uh, something I came up with because okay. I, I had, I got to remind myself to turn around and touch that stuff occasionally because I'm looking at my computer editing so much because oh, so many people yeah. have been really kind to, to give me content. That's awesome. Uh, so let's do this proper. Welcome sure. to Room Six, the channel dedicated to local music wherever it may be and the people that make it, including my guest, who is a mutual on TikTok. And we finally are getting this done <laughs> after multiple tries. Um, he's a lo-fi alternative artist from Philadelphia and the lead vocalist of alternative band The Great Enough, specializing in DIY recording uh, of guitars in the bathroom and bazookies who knows where. His latest single, <laughs> Shake Till the Fever Is Gone, is out now. Uh, and I'll be reviewing his EP. Uh, so that, keep an eye out for that uh, video. And uh, if you haven't followed, please follow. Feel free to go over to the tube of you and subscribe, uh, Room Six LV. And uh, he's a poet, erstwhile musical wanderer, multi instrumentalist, <laughs> a troubadour, indie darling, wacky sock lover, and sleepless slave to dreams of stardom. Who also loves pizza, irony, and Oxford commas. That's some research Please right there. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Please welcome to the channel, Bright Kelly, nineteen. Say hi. Hi. I that's a that's a really impressive run up. I feel like the only way you could have got me more off guard than knowing that much about me coming in would be if I was eating hot wings. <laughs> that oh, amazing. Yeah. With some with some blue eyeshadow on. I love my blue eyeshadow. Yeah, you do. I th so I thought about I thought about going crazy with the makeup today, but honest to god, man, it's it's 10:30 on a I don't even know what I, day of the week it is anymore. <laughs> It's Friday, sir. Oh boy, I'm, yeah. I have work. I have work at seven a.m. Oof! I just—that's me. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just finished day. that. The, the best part about losing my job is that for the last um, for like a month, we're we're having to literally break down the entire warehouse and empty it all out, which is it's so soul crushingly sad. It's like um, you're helping someone move without the excitement. Yeah, that sounds awful. I'm my own and, boss, so I have no one to blame but me that I have that I'm starting work so early. But that it's right. I, well, I, I, I mean, do it to myself. When it comes to the room six stuff, I'm my own boss. I get to pick what seventy hours a week I work, but <laughs> this doesn't pay the bills not yet. So no. But hey, uh, feel free to you know support, sponsor, all that I, jazz. Do what yeah, I can. It, yeah. Let's see here. Does if anybody happens to uh, who's Sleepy Maru? Is that your wife? No, my wife's Mel the Pixie. She'll pop in and out. She's uh, she's keeping an ear out for the kid to make sure we don't get interrupted. Nice. Uh, welcome, Sleepy Maru. I find it interesting. Oh, I just stopped saving, apparently. No, no, I don't want to end the live. God damn it. <laughs> I just want to make it bigger. I really thought this was going to automatically just split the screen somehow. I, I and, feel like there's probably some super simple answer that we just don't know. Like, I bet you there's some incredibly simplistic thing that that, that we just don't know because we I've never shared a live before. I go right live, on. Uh, I, I just go, realized I go live solo. Nice. I I just realized that what I thought was was like TikTok recording options was my screen recording options, like an idiot. So uh -huh. here I am trying to like do stuff, and all I'm doing is stopping the recording. So we're back. Hey. Professional. I want more of this. <laughs> hey man, I'll put in some lightsaber sounds. You, uh, you. So, I, 
Yeah, you made me uh, you made me pay attention to some of my older content today, but while you were doing your research, nice. Um, I gotta say, your profile pic on TikTok is, I mean, just chef's kiss. It, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I'm trying to remember which one of this. Um, you, you got the hair kind of falling down, and and it's it's just androgynous enough. Oh, that's yeah, that's kind of my brand. Yeah, <laughs> just androgynous. It, I mean, enough at that, at that size. At that size, yeah. I think, I think you're. Um, oh, thank you for the holiday universe, pretty boy, or some. Yeah, pretty boy Ali twenty four sent some stuff. To Apparently, not even to either one of us. Life is interesting. Life is interesting. Yes. Well, all right. Enough of this. We're getting sidetracked yes. by this. Let's get into the meat of the interview. Why does? Me. What's your favorite topping on pizza, and why isn't it pineapple? Oh, are you an anti-pineapple person? No. I actually just tonight my, had pizza. That... My favorite pizza topping is pineapple. Here, try this. Mushroom, pineapple, and bacon bits with barbecue sauce drizzle. Uh, I would leave off the mushrooms for my for myself, but yeah, I would eat that. Um, no, the mushrooms do, give it a little, a little... I'm not a mushrooms bulk. guy. I do, uh, I do grilled chicken and pineapple with an herb and spice blend. Nice. That, that's my, that's my go-to. That's like that's like my default pizza, and uh, and people who think that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza are boring rule followers that I do not have time for. Amen. And and we're totally so far in the weeds already. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. The weeds are where I shine. Yeah. Right. So, um, besides being a respected session vocalist, you've toured and performed with some big names such as uh, Vegas Natives and Imagine Dragons. Yeah. Judah and the Lion, Mike Shinoda of Lincoln Park and of Fort, Fort Minor fame, uh, the Wallflowers and more. And I want to know how much was with the band and how much of that was solo? So all the bands you just listed were with The Great Enough. Um, the Great Enough had a big run for a while there where we were just opening for everybody. And then we were doing this thing that I called the Nostalgia Run where like for a while we were just opening up for all these like former heavyweight, like nineties and early two thousands bands. And I don't mean to say that in an insulting way, cause they were still packing, you know, some pretty large places still for like 5,000, 8,000 people. Um, but you know, that was like Eve six and fuel and sister Hazel and um, alien ant farm and Atlas genius and all these cool bands that, that are a lot of who, a lot of these bands are people that I grew up kind of idolizing. So it was awesome to be doing that. Most of that stuff was with the band as a solo artist is where you see, um, if you saw, there's a list of like seventies artists. There's like, I, I, as a solo artist, I worked with guys who are from, uh, elephants memory and the plastic Ono band with John Lennon that played on his solo material, uh, people from Parliament Funkadelic, people from uh, Stevie Wonder's backing band, um, and and uh, you know a, a lot of like sort of neo soul and stuff like that. And it's funny because the two things really disconnected. The reason my solo career and my band career have such distinct personalities, I think, is because the only reason I have a solo career is because the music I write is maybe too eclectic for what the Great Enough was at that time in our career. The Great Enough was a, a pretty well-defined band, and I would be writing these songs that kind of didn't have a home there. So I started working on a solo record around the time that we all got shut down, and it was this like contemplative kind of indie lo-fi thing that was kind of at odds with the big bombastic, like ultra-produced killer Z alternative rock of what The Great Enough had become known for. So a lot of disconnect there, but I've had more commercial success with The Great Enough than I have on my own. Yeah, I definitely can tell there's when you hear the great enough versus Bright Kelly, it's a definite difference in in terms of sound, but the root uh the 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 roots are still there. The, the you know the core, it comes from the same place, you can tell. Um and from there I wanted to ask what's your earliest musical influence? And when I say that, I mean what is that do you have a memory of that moment of I want to do that? And, and, you know, was it a, a song or an artist or a genre or an instrument that led so that I, down that? I actually have thought about this a lot and I have like a, a good, like solid, short three-part answer. Um, <laughs> the, the first memory I have of singing is almost the first memory I have. That's how far back it goes. So my first experience singing was being a cantor in, in, the, in church. 
of singing the, you know, like of being a Catholic school school kid and singing the Alleluia stuff. Um, when Why? I was right. So when I was a teeny, teeny, tiny, I did that. Um, and I, that, that, that was the point at which I knew I liked singing and my, and my, uh, my biological father was a singer. Um, and so there was some element of it being in the blood. So I knew from an early age that I liked singing. And then my, my father, who I, my stepfather, who I call my father, uh, my father was a total metalhead. So I grew up surrounded by Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath and, and, and specifically Rainbow. He was a huge fan of Rainbow and Dio and all that stuff. Wow. Yeah. And so um, all of that was up until that point in my life, until I was maybe 12 or I think I was probably about 11 or 12. Um, I knew I liked music. I knew I liked singing. I thought metal was cool, but I didn't want to do it. I don't think I knew I wanted to like do something creative, but I think at that stage, I still wanted to grow up and be a knight and like fight dragons and save ladies. Um, <laughs> but I, I do distinctly remember the exact thing that like opened my mind to the idea of wanting to write songs and be a performer. Cause I actually honestly thought I would be an author first. I thought I would be, I thought I would write stories and that was going to be my life. But it was okay. it was the VH1 storytellers that, going way back. It was the VH1 yep. storytellers that Counting Crows did, and it I remember wasn't, that one. And it wasn't when it was on TV. I completely missed that. I was like nine or something. I had no idea what it was. But they put out a double live album and disc one of the double live album. It's called Across a Wire Live in New York City. Disc one is the VH1 storytellers performance, and I happened upon it totally at random it fell into my life and i put it on and it was the first like not metal music i had heard in my house in five or six years you know because like my grandmother listened to elvis presley and my mom listened to melissa etheridge and the bangles or whatever but my first exposure to music that felt like it was mine was the vh1 storytellers version of anna begins by counting crows and that was the song where i went oh oh this this might be who i am Nice doing a quick share. Yeah, that just I know I was like, what what happens if I try to share? Now I know. It, yeah, it pauses you, but it's okay because <laughs> you came right back. But yeah, it was that it was Anna Begins from VH1 Storytellers was the song where I, I went, Oh, I I I maybe have this bug now. It was that specific song. Yeah, and now that I hear your stuff, uh, when I do your review video of your album, I already have a few there's there's a few things there that I'm like, kind of this and a little bit of this. And I, there was something missing in Counting Crows is what it is. So thank you for that. <laughs> That's awesome. My uh, my um, my friend my friend Nick excels at comparing me to other bands, and he most recently said that the EP sounds like City in Color meets Oh God, I cannot remember. He said this really indie guy, Dennis, somebody. Um, but I'll I'll send that to you, and you can see if you think he was right. But he's notorious for being able to to key in on that, and he's a magazine writer. It's what he does for a living. Mm hmm. Hey, what's up, that baseball kid? Hey, hey. Yeah, and uh, thanks to Mel for, for sharing the live. I appreciate you. That's what hey, hey. prompted me to try to share it while I'm in the live. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, we, we live, we learn, and I'm not going to say the rest of the diaper slogan. That okay, Alanis, that. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, right. Jagged Little Pill is another one of those albums for me. That's oh, a, that's a seminal record. Yeah, it is. Um, speaking of which, you use there's a heavy use of metaphors in your lyrics, and I wanted to know: uh, Are you using a thesaurus, or like where where does this well of, of metaphors and similes come from? Uh, remember how I said I thought I was going to be an author first. Mm -hmm. um, I I published poetry and short stories uh, before I ever had a record out. Um, and I, that's what my degree was in. I went to school for years to learn to be a writer. It was my, my plan. It's so stupid. My plan B was writing. My plan B is as, as <laughs> or, precarious or more precarious than this. I never, I never gave any thought to doing like a stable, normal guy job. Um, but words are, have been the core of my life for a really long time. And, and I would say that as a, as a songwriter, I'm usually thinking about the lyrics as a poem. Um, nice. I'm be they're being driven by the, you know, the senses of rhythm and melody and the rise and fall of the rhythm and melody definitely inform the words that I choose, but no, I don't use a thesaurus or a rhyming dictionary. I am just notoriously like I'm that guy 
I'm that guy that knows all the words. You're a wordy little bastard. <laughs> I am a wordy little bastard. I'm just that guy that, like, I'm the guy who knows what pulchritudinous means. I'm that, I'm 100% that bitch. Ooh, ooh, wait, wait. Pulchritudinous? Pulchritudinous. And my, okay, wait, my, wait, my wait. wife quoting Dr. Who can, in the comments. Ooh, let me see if it. I can break it down. Let me see if I can break it down. This is I do this uh, exact thing I, where I break down the Latin or the Greek or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you see what your wife is saying. Yeah, yeah, musician and writer. That's you. <laughs> we're all stories in the end. That's a Doctor Who quote. Which, which one? The we're all stories in the end? Yeah, that's that's uh, 11. The 11th Doctor said that. Yes. Yes, it is. I, I'm a I'm a loose... I'm, I'm a very light Whovian. I mean, I have this. Nice. Uh, my Christmas tree topper is a is a TARDIS. I, I also have one of those, a Dalek, that is this big. It's plastic, and it's a Yahtzee game. Uh, I'll like, probably have a Doctor Who tattoo before too long. I'm 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 a more than cat. I'm more I'm a fandom person, kind of in general, though. I I, I like a lot of things. All right, I give up. What's Paul Paul Cartoonist mean? Beautiful. That makes sense. Yeah, it but just means it just means pretty. But if you use that okay. word to tell to tell a woman she's pretty, you're definitely like a fedora wearing nice guy with a capital but N. You capital pull that G. out in you pull that out in Barnes and Noble. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe there, maybe there. If yeah. not, you're definitely like you're de you're definitely that guy, the walking right. fedora. <laughs> not, which a, is like a shame because great... fedora for because I do like fedoras, but be, but you, you have to either you have to either be like you have to so explicitly. I, I, I know I've seen you in them. You have to so explicitly not be that guy to pull one off, which is why you do pull one off because you have you, there, there's no element of that to you, of that like weird kind of strangeness. Just to be actually, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, no, those nice guy is in, in the in the Reddit sense of the word, and yes, those are trilbies. You're correct. Fedoras there have you a wider brim. I because yes, I I there I do have a fedora that I inherited from my uh, grandfather in law uh, who passed away, and this is like stiff straw. Yeah. Like I wear it on very special occasions because it's white. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I feel I, I feel bad for wearing it. I have a giant monolith of a head, so I don't wear hats very often. Monolith. That's because you're so brainy. You're you have yeah, a pulsatudinous brain. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Nash, that's me. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, the, but you talking about the Doctor Who tattoo actually leads me into my next question. You have an uh, ancient Greek coin hidden in a tattoo. I do. Yeah. Actually, I can I can quite easily show you this. Um, uh, let me just see if I can see I mean, it on the screen. I, I mean, right, I saw I saw a picture. So right but... there on your screen, everybody, if you can make that out, it's a little faded right now because I'm a little ashy. But I have a, <laughs> what, an, an Athenian oval buried in this in the roots of the tree on my arm. I have an Athenian oval, which is the traditional gift uh, given to uh, uh, Charon, the the oarsman who takes you across the river Styx. Now I've heard it pronounced Charon. I've heard Sharon. it both. I've heard it both ways as well. I like the hard C. Because... I like Sharon as well. I, 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 it always rankles me a little bit when someone goes Sharon in like a a, a well, show. It's like Greek doesn't really use that sound. The ch and the s are you know like like right. even 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 the witch from the even the witch of uh, uh, Odyssey fame um, in ancient Greek would probably have been uh, Kirke, not Circe. But you know, yeah, well, I'm not... I mean, look at. Go ahead. As you say, I'm not like that guy, like pronounce things however you want within reason. Language is an ever evolving thing. I'm not like the, right. if it's not in the dictionary, it's not real guy. But, you know, um, I li I personally like the pronunciation Chiron, and I think it's probably closer to correct, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Feel free to check right on. on this in the comments. Get in the comments. Thank you, the tech bard, for following. I appreciate you. Hey, hey, um, hey. I know hey, that hey. guy. Link is in bio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you before we move on, I sort of just yes. to wrap up this whole thing. Uh, it also with the, the Latin kind of thing as well, um, where it's kind of like, how do I pronounce this? You've played Fallout New Vegas, right? Yes. Caesar Kaiser in the same freaking game. In the same game, yeah. And it bothered the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know. What, I, I think Kaiser was probably closer to the correct actual ancient Greek pronunciation, but again. I'm like a dude with a bachelor's degree and, a, and, and an obsession with history. I'm not a translator of ancient Greek. So uh, I'm, don't quote me, anybody. I'm not the authority on this. 
It's just it's a thing I have a passing interest in. <laughs> right on. Um, and uh, just once again, the tech bard, thank you very much. Says I help people who help my friends. And oh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, yogurt one cam. Not sure. You're asking, can I join? And I, I think you're asking, can I join? Uh, no, we're, this all this is all about Bright Kelly today. We're we're doing an interview for him. If you're a musician uh, and you want to do you want to review or an interview or both, hit me up comments or you know go to the the, the channel that is the youtube of you <laughs> goddamn algorithm and <laughs> and um uh, and you know hit me up there um uh, all my videos have a uh, a link down there for uh email address or for uh social media the algorithm is said, vengeful oh god it's so ridiculous it, it's yeah <laughs> uh, anywho moving on we're not here for that no and i i, no. I just want to thank you for for taking a chance on this uh uh new thing for me doing the live stream sharing thing um it, it's uh yeah. I mean, like i said it's going great it's just not it, I don't, it's not what it's, i expected but i like it it's okay man it'll all it'll all get good. fixed in the edit we're good <laughs> in the edit what edit that's, that's the point exactly, of this that's exactly what that, i was really hoping i was that's why i was really hoping to not accidentally log myself out on my laptop of tiktoks so that i could be simultaneously streaming to the purple app and to the tube of you. So it was like, as soon as we're done, boom, it's all baked in, no editing. It's never happened to me before. And it, now, just like I thought, something happened. They so I put you. it out there in the universe and they got it came you. around. Well, keep hitting um, me, man. This is great. Uh, so before we move on to some more weird personal questions, huh. I'm going to ask you a question that I ask of all my prey. <laughs> okay. And um, well, actually, before that, any plans to come to Vegas to perform or just to come? I would love to come back to Vegas and perform. I haven't been in Vegas in quite a long time, but like, yeah, for sure. So my my label's based in California, and I'm actually hoping to – it's hard because they don't have a strong support system out there, but I, I'm hoping to put together a Southern California Vegas like short run where I come out for a week, you know, hit six places and head back. So, right. When I get around to that, I will absolutely tag you in. And, uh, <laughs> but by and, all means, then you know what? You need a place to stay. I got the room. Awesome. I got six rooms. <laughs> I I six will rooms. take you up on that, man. I absolutely by all means. will take you um, up on that. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it may be air mattresses or you know sleeping bags, but yeah, um, fine with me. <laughs> that's that's life on the road, right? Yeah, I sleep in my van a fair bit. Hang on. So here comes. The, the usual interview question, and I apologize in advance. Ready? Yeah. How would you define your musical style? Elevator pitch, <laughs> go! Uh, Lyric-centered, uh, story-focused, a little melodramatic, and rooted in folk and rock uh, traditions but with a tendency toward uh, sonic experimentation. I would say Ooh. it straddles the line between 80s, 80s 90s alternative new wave, uh, the, ni the 90s, 2000s alt-pop movement, classic sort of folky indie stuff, and then um, there's some element of like, Oh, there you go. Right. In the, so somebody coined that you can see it in the comments. Somebody once coined the this, this word. That word was not was made up for me uh, in a previous like a radio interview where um, I've got I like it. Volta radio or something referred to me as alternative because it is it's it is at the end of the day, it's indie alternative music. It's coming from like a, you know, like a Counting Crows and R.E.M. Uh, Gaslight Anthem kind of pulling from all these bands that I love. But I am always going to sound like the sort of like white boy Otis Redding knockoff that I am. Um, so, <laughs> so there's always going to be like the big vibrato and the raspy thing and the soulful runs, which is unusual in that style of music. You know what I mean? Like in the, in the style of music that I love, very few of the singers um, are, it's like two different things. Like on the one hand, there's the music, the bands that I love and the songs that I love. And on the other hand, there's the singers that I love and almost never do the two meet. You know, my favorite singers are like Wilson Pickett and Sam Cooke and Otis Redding. And, and um, uh, surprisingly, maybe, maybe not surprisingly, most of my favorite singers are women, Dusty Springfield, Haley Williams, Regina Spector. Um, 
but my favorite songs are by the you know the Counting Crows and and uh, Soundgarden and, and you know Indian alternative bands like that. So I think I'm sort of of two worlds myself, and that bleeds into everything I do. Right, and you can totally hear that in your music that there's an old soul there who really like gets the classics and really appreciates it. Yeah, but like writing and and performing the alternative slash emo stuff yep and because partly because just the time you know because of when you live basically but also the 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 market isn't asking for that and also um yeah you you hearing you sing without knowing what you look like is the whole other thing than knowing what you look like and then hearing you sing yeah i've had a couple of people be surprised that i was white which I think is funny. That's, I well, guess it's, I a was compliment. talking about being a ginger, but you know, that too. Um, yeah. Soulless no, bad. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the, the, the it's the, it's that sort of weird thing where like the, the music that I write is driven is derived from so many things. And the way that I sing is derived from so many different things. And I could like niche down. I could do like the whole like niche down and, and be a genre artist if I wanted to be, I'd, I'd considered that, you know, I'd considered like, do I want to just do like Leon Bridges for a while was just like, he was a sixties soul artist right. today and, and he's branched out now, but when he started, that's what he was. And when, when Hosier started, he was a specific kind of artist. And I've just sort of struggled to decide on being a specific kind of artist. And I think I'm just going to continue being the sort of like Jackson Pollock throw stuff at the wall artist and hope that it connects with enough people to keep my rent paid. And honestly, uh, the way your where your music is rooted in and where you tend to take it, I think that you, you have the freedom of doing that yeah. in that your popularity is, Hey, what's it going to be? As opposed to, we know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. But so at the same you're... time, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I was just, it, that's exactly what it is. You just attract a different kind of audience when you're that artist. I agree. Yeah. And and that's, I always tried to write my own music that way where um, I wasn't the guy that's repeating the chorus over and over and over. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't the, the, the singer who was um, going like, you know, Ooh, <laughs> you know, fill, yeah. using fillers if I could avoid it. And um, it's one of those, like I enjoyed my music, but I never found a, a market for it really. Um, sure. And, and that's why eventually YouTube came around and now that's my mistress. <laughs> I, uh, I, oh, I thought about launching a channel, but, but the, the idea of putting on one more hat on top of all the hats I already wear, I get is it. Just daunting. I get it. But you already live stream to the purple app. I do. And yeah, I actually and, have, course... and my live streams actually cross post to the tube of you as well. Okay. Then you already have one. I, yeah, but like that's different than than creating curated content for a channel. I, I got you. I got you. Um, some of actually some of uh, my wife and my favorite, uh, actually my fifteen year old kid too. Some of our favorite TikTokers eventually made kind of like archives and longer forms of their TikToks sure. on the tube of you, um, on the Red app. <laughs> and on the Red app. That's what I heard somebody say. I call like it. it. I was like the I Red like app. It. And it, it, like it's it. a tube, and it involves you. Hey. Yeah, but, I think um, I heard somebody call it the me tunnel once, which I thought was hysterical. Nice, but I I can I can see both sides of it. Uh, for me, I'm coming at it as first with uh, that app that shall not be named, and then yeah. <laughs> and then Vol- Voldy Tube, and then it was TikTok. It was like all right, yeah, whatever. Because I started with you know Facebook and Twitter and all those as their tools to promote yeah. my music, and then it became their tools to promote Room Six, yeah, and it's still that way. I, I, if I'm putting something personal out there, it's really, really rare because mostly I don't have the time. Uh, yeah. Like I, I put out there that Santa brought me a job hunt for Christmas and immediately people who've been on the channel were like, well, Hey, so-and-so is hiring. And you know, here's a link oh, to my cool. job. Yeah. I actually got an interview based on somebody who I've done reviews of their music. And um, that's heartwarming. It is. It, it, the, the music scene in, in Vegas is definitely really, it's it's coming back to where it's a community. But thanks to the quarantine, it seems like a lot of people are very cognizant 
of some of the toxicity and some of the clickiness that there was. Sure. And they're really they're they're really pushing like, hey, live music is live music. Don't be a douche. You yeah, know, don't, don't be that guy. Yeah. Nobody the, likes that guy. Two... <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right, Mel. We got to be careful with the uh, the algorithm. Yeah, we got to be careful what we say, lest Al Gore's rhythm. It's funny us. you say that because there is a local band, Al Gore's kind rhythm. of blues rooted, but also rock. They're called Al Gore Rhythm, all one word, like nice. Al Gore. Right, like the former vice president. Rhythm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and they're going to be on the channel. And um, the the uh, tell front, them they have to call their album an inconvenient groove. They actually put out a cover album called Cover Up. I think it was called, and it. It's them doing four songs that are, it's an EP. They're doing like, What a Wonderful World, but completely like punk. Nice. <laughs> but nice. slow punk. It's, I, did a, like, I, I did a garage rock cover of Be My Baby by the Ronettes last month. Hasn't everybody? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you and I share something in common. We are Listen. improper beard growth brothers. Oh, yeah. I got a spot right here that right here, if I my... get it too too short, it, it yep, the comb over. There's my patch, my secret look. I, I come by it honestly. Uh it is it is I I was ethnically doomed to not have a good beard. Ethnically doomed. My, well, my mother's family are are indigenous Hawaiian. No, I, I wanted to... beard people. Right. <laughs> um and by the way, if you're watching and you're wondering what the Trevor project is that you see on the, the screen there, uh that's the charity I chose. It's actually, I applied for a job with them. I'm hoping to hear back. Oh, they, awesome. provide, uh, they provide they um, provide counseling and mental health, counseling and just help for the LGBTQ teen yep. community. And I would love, as soon as I mentioned that to my wife and kid, they're like, oh, I hope you get that job. I was like, yeah. me too. I actually, I actually am familiar with the Trevor Project, and I think they do great work. Yeah, and I was looking through the options of all the charities. I was like, I want something mental health. I know it's important to you. And we'll we'll get there, <laughs> but I <laughs> I was like, no, nope, Trevor Project, there it is, because my family we actually do donate to like St. Jude's and, and some other like uh, um, uh, Three Square and some of those yeah. things, but I really feel strong about Trevor Project. And hey, you know, if you guys are watching and want to, you know, hire me. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, if you're watching this, wondering like you want to see um, see me do regular interviews where they're in the same room as me in a kitchen with the exact same cabinets <laughs> it's everybody's got those cabinets but yeah, oh, yeah um i i do have um there's a link in bio for my channel and feel free to go over there subscribe like and share and you can check out i do reviews i do of, of people's music i do reviews of, of live shows i do reviews of, of whiskeys because why not <laughs> i do interviews um, some bit virtual, some live, mostly live. And the interviews, a lot of times they'll perform. Now, right. I'm listening. I'm music. just, I'm listening. Oh, there's fine. just, there's just whiskey right here. So much whiskey right next to me. Continue. <laughs> Come on, son. Oh. Well, I, uh, I, I know you have a music video out for the first song off the EP that you gave me to review. Yes. Um, which by the way, my favorite one on the whole album. Part of me feels like you should have left that as the closer, but it's also the the grabber at the beginning, just because it's different, just because yeah. it's so well done. Uh, can we can we talk about that at all? Or actually, yeah, before we can talk it, about anything you want, we're talking about "Shake Till the Fever Is Gone," yes. and I want to see more of that on TikTok. But keep hammering people with that; it's amazing. Thank but you. Uh, but is it okay if after this interview, assuming that I can cobble together a re recorded version of this? Mm -hmm. that that makes sense can i tack on the music video for that to the end yes okay absolutely you hear that tube of you i got permission I am granting permission to use the music video i recorded in the defunct falling apart back parking lot of my apartment complex that is <laughs> that is functionally condemned and not mm -hmm. allowed to be parked in yeah. it honestly but, looked like you were kind of walking like there could have been just a river right off camera that's what you I know? was going for. It was, I waited. I, I got lucky with the snowstorm. Um, I wanted something picturesque. I did the trick. Um, I did, uh, the, you know, the trick that a lot of people play, I think, is that I actually filmed that video at double speed and then slowed it down. Ah, that's why it yes. looks, that's why it looks so moody. Um, I, it, I, I, it's actually only about 60 seconds of footage of me, like rapid fire singing the song. So like I'm, when I filmed it, I'm going, 
and then it was over <laughs> but then but then when you play it back slow down it looks really beautiful yeah no it, it totally does um there's a trick in in uh visual effects and animation where that in the same shot you can have one character going what they call 24s or twos 24 frames per second and the other yeah. one can be going 30 or yeah. 60 and just to show like this one is is you know totally buttery smooth the pro uh Spider-Man into the into the uh, Spider Verse. They yep. did that. They did. And Miles was was at the the janky speed because <laughs> he's still figuring it out. But um, Peter was not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Peter's. Yeah. And, and then he died. Anyway. So <sighs> I have I have a couple more questions for you. You're almost done. Thank you for hanging in there with us I'm on the good. live stream. And um, definitely, if you do check out the link in bio for the the tube of you channel room six. Uh, feel free to subscribe so that you'll get notified when I review his album, uh, which is called, I didn't write it down, I'm remembering, it is... I'll tell you if you want. It's not called The Great Enough. No. That's the band. That's correct. Yeah, it's... It's called The Quiet Ones. But there it is. The problem is, it's still in my phone. I haven't <laughs> yeah, downloaded I know. it to the computer yet. I know. I, know. I get that. I'm like, I totally ah! got that. So, yeah, The Quiet Ones, which... In true alternative fashion, is not na a name of any of the songs, and I don't nope. think he mentions it in any of his lyrics. Nope. <laughs> These are those the songs that are just the quiet ones. My my wife would like me to put this on screen for you in case it is required. You can flip it later, but this is official permission for the red <laughs> for the red channel. There you go. Nice. Um, so it, it was. It's it's a it, the title of the record is is actually pretty simple. Um, the songs I, I did this batch of songs last year and that record is the quiet songs it's just the quieter it's the quiet acoustic collection it's the songs with no drums um and it's also a reference to a phrase i heard a lot growing up because this might surprise you because i'm relatively gregarious now but i was a very quiet kid um i was a don't make eye contact with people and 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 go to speech therapy kid um, and they would always say, yeah, but it's the quiet ones you have to watch out for. Ah, uh, there, the penny yeah. drops. Nice. And so that um, was the, that was the source of the album's title. Cool. Um, before I move on to the next question, I, I wanted to ask how you are, how do you feel if we get a little bit serious, we dip, dip a little bit into slightly more down that path. Hit me. Okay. Um, I, I know from you know my research and and just uh, doom scrolling your TikTok <laughs> that like a lot of kids, myself included, your childhood kind of got screwed up by religion. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. going to go into ticketers. I know you, okay. you put it out there, but suffice to say, it certainly is flavoring your music writing. It has to. Yeah, just yeah, all of that, and. Um, for me, I wrote music that had nothing to do with my experience with that because I was focused on, I'm going to be, you know, acoustic based rock and roll love songs. That's what I want to do. And I didn't swing the other way of F bomb this and bitch this. You know, I didn't totally go that way. I just prefer to be like, okay, I'm just going to write what I call what I, what feels good music to me. Sure. In fact, uh, I had, I, I, for, I fronted a three piece indie rock band called The Suspense. Uh, and the tagline was, "We we just make good music, or something like that." That's totally, valid. You know, that's totally <laughs> valid. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, it was total. Just you know, ah, eh, whatever. Uh, this is it was called the suspense for that moment, that pregnant pause when the music stops and then oh, crashes yeah. down. Like, and I love that. Oh, in, in rock, especially right when you're about to hit the, hit the hit the pedal. Just, yeah, I love that. Um, but that music. The rock, indie rock was where I started expunging some demons and, and really took. It's funny, like the singer songwriter navel gazing stuff was more pining after a, a, a girl or a woman. Sure, sure. Or writing what I thought would, hey, this, yeah. you know, the, the, let's do that. Whereas the rock stuff was where I really got introspective sure. and, and sang about how, you know, like about my heart and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it meant more for some reason because I was being so much more vocal about it. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So I was wondering, 
you've done you're, you've done both worlds where you know you've done the, the band the rock and band and the you know the the shake till the fever is gone mm-hmm. which do you, which which hits harder to you when you are done when you realize okay i'm i'm done writing that song that i'm ready to rec- ready to start practicing it and recording it now that's an which one hits question. harder yeah, that's, I, why I wrote, that's why I asked it. That's a really, really well phrased question, and especially because you couched it in. And by the way, you're not going to cross any lines by mentioning something I've talked about publicly. I appreciate you like asking and 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 prefacing and making sh- and not like you know not trying to like ambush me with that question or anything like that. But I'm I'm pretty open about the fact that I had an abusive childhood and that religion played a, a fairly uh, heavy role in in what those difficulties were. Um, well, this is live, and I'm not Nardwar, so I didn't want to. Like- yeah. You I know, totally ambush you, you. You didn't, you didn't Robert Downey Jr. interview me. I got it. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, you know the one I'm talking about where he, where he ambushes Robert. Um, so yeah. the the reality is, I think that the songs mostly come from the same place. Uh, they're it's just really different frameworks, you know. So like "Shake to the Fever" gone is gone as a really naked song about. Um, about loss and and about trying to convince yourself that you're going to recover from that loss. But at the same time, the same message exists in the great enough songs, just maybe couched in optimism rather than couched in uh, admission of pain or guilt or whatever, you know, cause uh, a great example is our song inexplicable. Um, the, the lyrics of the song are not the focus of the song because it's this really, you know, Mr. Bright, sidey, slammy rock song. But if you do break the lyrics down, uh, what I'm actually saying is uh, uh, pretty intense. I'm saying um, it's like trying to catch your breath, but you're in outer space. It's mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, you know it, 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 and all these really, really difficult things and saying it's inexplicable why we try again. When all these things happen, we try to make a dollar out of dust. We try, but the world you know, turns up, turns up, it's back on us and, 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 and we fail and we fall and then we try again and trying to understand why. And that's like, that's the core dichotomy of my existence that I've been trying to write about for a million years is, um, I don't know what it is about me that made me survive my trauma. I know that my trauma was really intense because, you know, I've listened to a lot of true crime podcasts and they kind of sound like bedtime stories to me. Uh, and I've, you know, I, and I've been through things that, that a lot of people are like, oh, that's, you know, my, my childhood stories come with a trigger warning. Right. But I don't feel like a person who that's true of. I feel pretty all right. I feel pretty strong most of the time. And it's not to say that I haven't struggled and failed and falled, falled, fell. <laughs> um, I have, I've, I've. You know, I've I've been damaged and I've been on at breaking points, but I keep coming back from it and I keep resurrecting myself and I keep being sure that I'm always going to. And I don't know why I'm like that. I don't know why there's this kernel of like completely immortal optimism at the very center of me that just insists that no matter how can I curse? Yes. No matter how fucked things are, no matter how completely fucked things are, I'm always convinced that I'm going to survive it and learn from it and change because of it and make something of it. And my, I'm, I have, I have somebody right behind the camera saying, "What? It's the hair. My hair is why? Because I'm a ginger. Okay. My wife says it's because I'm a redhead. No, but that, that's every song, whether it's the Great Enough or Shake Till the Fever Is Gone. Every song." is rooted around that trying to explore that part of myself to some degree, uh, at least the ones that are designed to be introspective as for what hits harder. Shake till the fever is gone is the short answer yeah. to that question. I mean, it's just so <laughs> obvious that that is where you, you get your yayas out as you know, the stone said, but yeah. the, the, the band is cool. I mean, like, you know, I've done both things too. And yeah. having a band is awesome and all, Oh, I love but my. It band. comes with all the things that a, having a band comes with the, the highs and lows. Yeah, so I write, you know, I write like if there, if a lyric comes out of my mouth, I I wrote it with almost mm-hmm. no exceptions. You know, what I mean, there's one, there's there's one or two lines here and there in great enough songs, and there's one song where our guitar player wrote a big chunk of the lyrics. But for the most part, I write everything that comes out of my mouth, and I always have. 
Uh, but the great enough music is to some degree filtered through the lenses of two of my closest friends, you know, my drummer and my guitar player, Brian and John, who are like wonderful, incredible, amazing, talented people who push me really hard to, to make sure that I don't slip into comfort zones and things like that. And so the songs I get through what I call the committee, because everything has to pass through all three of us, the songs to get through committee have been a little bit filtered. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Um, they, but, but they've been a little bit filtered and they're a little less, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, indulgent. They're a okay. little less, they're a little less self-indulgent. Um, and a little, a, a little tighter, I think, because of it, maybe. Whereas the stuff that I do when there's just, it's just me in a room and no one to control me, um, I, you know, a, a lot, there's, there's a line or two here and there in, in my solo songs that maybe wouldn't have gotten through committee where, you know, somebody in the room might have cocked an eyebrow at me and been like, hey, dude, isn't that a little, isn't that a little dark or isn't that a little self important? You're like, um, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> right and when i'm in a room with myself i don't i don't ask those questions and if i ask those questions i force myself to go and eh, shut the fuck up and finish, for finish me my committee was always i mean now that my kid is 15 it's a whole other like i don't run music by the kid because the kid is doesn't is like no whatever fine <laughs> but my 15. wife is six my wife is six and a half years younger than me and she She's one of those, she's supportive by staying out of what I do, like letting me do all the, all the stuff, sure. creative stuff. But she's not the merch girl, you know, she's not the one who's there at every show because she doesn't, she'll just sit there and do Sudoku or watch TV and I'm, I'm, I'm sending laughing. my heart out to her. Yeah. I'm, I'm only laughing because Mel is the merch girl. Oh yeah. No, no. And I, I have many, many musician friends who've been on the channel who I, I see their girlfriends or now their fiancés and now their wives who are at every show, dressed to kill, hawking merch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and there's that little part of me going, where was mine? Where was mine? But on the other valid. hand, but on the other hand, we had a kid just, you know, and now you have a kid yeah. and certain, certain things take place, um, which leads me to my next question, actually. Sure. Uh, I, I think you answered that, that question, right? Yes. I'm good. Oh, bully. Cool. I think so. Your song, uh, Jacob, get up. Lucas, get up. Yes. I'm sorry. Well, choose Jacob. I don't. Are you team Jacob? Is that what you're telling me? Sure. Anyway. <laughs> no. No. God damn it. Vampires don't sparkle. <laughs> that is the right answer. So, anywho, uh, we're just pissing everybody off. Anyway, um, Lucas, get up. Is that about your child, or because no? So. Um... My for my daughter is a year and a half, and her name is Avery Robin, and she is the the delight of my existence, and the <laughs> most difficult thing I have ever done with uh, in any capacity. And actually, the reason why Mel is my former merch girl, not my current merch, not not no longer able to do that uh, because we do have a kid now. Um, but more importantly than that, I just wanted to very quickly say that that Mel Mel's the merch girl, but Mel's also the first person to hear every song. And the first person to give me feedback on every song, and, and, and Mel is going off in the comments. By the way, yes, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> real quick, Mel I just want to interrupt does. you for one second. Sure, I'm just going to pa pause on the kids' story for one second. I want to thank everybody who's who's liking and commenting, and um, also just viewing. Appreciate you. Uh, I've, I've seen the the, the the number of viewers go up and down and up and down. Like it, you know, it's alive. Yeah, but if you're does. just joining us, this guy, I don't know which where he is in the. You had it right the first time. Yeah, this guy's Bright Kelly. He's in Philadelphia. And if you're here because you're follow room six, this is what I do when they're, you know, local and they're they're here in my place. But wanted to give TikTok interview live a, a, a try. Hits and misses. I'm liking it. And I think I'll do it again in the future. If yeah. we can figure out how to get just the two of us on the screen without all those invite boxes. I, I can't we'll figure have that to out. Work on it. Yeah. But um sorry. Go ahead you're and talk good. about the kid. You're you're good. We should have done a 10 minute tech run before the thing started. Uh, the problem is you can't do it without starting the live. <laughs> that's okay. You just have a sign up that says this isn't the real live stream. <laughs> and mm. this people and people just know. I do that on my Twitch all the time. I'm like, hey, we're not actually here yet, but well, feel free to I know to watch how to do it work. on 
I know how to do it on Twitch and, and, and on I know how to do that, just not on this. Right. This um, this is a whole other thing. Lucas get up was the source of the question. Um, yes. No, Lucas is me. My oh. my name is Bright Lucas Kelly. So your actual first name is Bright? Yes. Okay, I wasn't going to ask because you have said my name is Bright, but yeah, I thought uh, I don't maybe mind. It's a statement. I don't mind giving really clear answers on that too. Uh, I will say that Bright is my real name, and it is the only name I answer to. It has not always been the only name I answer to, but that's nobody's business. Is where I'm gotcha. is where I'm at with it. Um, I have my own personal reasons, and I'll probably tell that story at some point too. And the people who are close to me know that, but. Um, I do have right, a, Kelly behind the music. Yeah, I do have a dead name, and anyone who tries to call me by it maliciously will have to fight me. Is where I'm at with it. Um, so Lucas is me. I uh, I grew up in a bad neighborhood. I was always the the nerdy little skinny kid with. I used to carry books around with me all day and just read in class and um, and I just got my ass kicked all the time, dude. Um, I just, I, four guy, four or five kids in my class in the two grades above me, they used to chase me home from the bus stop every day and just beat the shit out of me. Um, and they used to, they used to sneak up behind me in class and wrap shit around my neck and throw me off the, off the lunch tables. And, um, and, and it culminated in, uh, in, in eighth grade and middle school, two bullies, um, setting me on fire. Uh, be, I thought be, that was a euphemism or a no, metaphor. No, they a hundred percent literally set me on fire. They used multiple packs of fireworks that they shoved down the back of my coat. I had third degree burns. I lost most of my hair. I'm partially deaf in this ear. Is a whole thing. Um, sorry if that triggers anybody. I, I I am okay. It's important that everyone knows that uh, I have processed the trauma. But um, Lucas is a love letter to the kid I was when, when I was ten, eleven, twelve years old, and just had had no concept when i was a kid i was talking about that spark of optimism in me i didn't have that mm -hmm. then i don't know where it came from it showed up a little later in my life it showed up maybe when i was becoming an adult um prior to that you know i i didn't and i didn't think i was going to make it to this age and i thought i was going to absent myself from this mortal coil as they as it were um, at, at that age. And so I wrote the song kind of imagining being able to send it through some, some quantum tunnel to young me and just say, Hey, get up, get up one day. If you get up one day, you're going to marry this beautiful woman and have this beautiful baby and, and know these beautiful people and make these songs that are going to be important to people. Maybe not a ton of people, but people, and and none of that'll happen if you don't get the fuck up. You promised that you would get up. So the song is literally me talking to myself. Yeah, now I get it now. Because um, <laughs> I, I, part of me was like, is this, is this a motivational thing for himself? Or is there a Lucas? And um, I I was like, I, I'm pretty sure the, the child is a, is, a, is a girl. So I don't think, you know, it's that. Who's Lucas? So that's... Thanks for Lucas answering is, that. Lucas is me. Hey, that Philly drummer. I know that guy. That Philly drummer pr produced some of my uh, some of my early records. Actually, that Philly that drummer Philly. is that Philly drummer just joined the live. That's Jason Dunkerley. He owns Drowning Fish Studios and drums in a cool band. I think it's called Anthems for the Abandoned. Um, oh, if you guys, okay. hey, I know Zero Sum too. Zero Sum is an is an electronic artist from Ohio. What's up? What's up? Nice. Uh, so yeah, nice. some of my, some of my people swinging through, uh, I Thank always, you. I always plug my friends. <laughs> Thank you, Mel, for uh, sharing. <laughs> Give credit where it's due. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But those, those yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate uh, all of you for watching. Um, a couple more questions. Yeah. Almost done. It. These are great and questions, I, by the way. You're good at this. I thank you. Been three and a half or four, almost four years. I, I, I like to think I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer to Sean Evans from hot ones. You've all, you know, he's he's the best interviewer on the planet. Dude, and his research team is mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. He he and and he's incisive and he doesn't ask the questions you expect him to ask and he's very disarming, which I like your like your your pizza topping question. He does a lot of stuff like that where it's these little psychologically disarming moments. And he, you know what he's doing, but you also know that he's doing it for a good reason because he wants to find yeah. some truth in you. It's, it's magic. 
I uh, yeah, I used to watch Hot Ones a lot, and um, I think some of that got in there. But I I really do my best to to not do what he does yeah. the same. You know, you're um, you're not so you're not I, copying him. You're good. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, normally the last question I have is uh, let's pretend we're talking a little you. We did that. You know, yeah. you already explained. So yeah, because it's like, what would you tell? I, I like to ask musicians a lot of times. What is one thing you wish someone had told you about? You know this twisted road called music that you wish you had known before you went down the, the road. Oh, I have but, an answer to that too. Okay. Well, pause. Yeah. <laughs> but first this video brought to you by room six whiskey. No, I'm just kidding. That'd be awesome. Oh. And incidentally, um, I am going to do a sh shameless plug here. If do. you like, if you like any of the merch, I've got room six dot shop. It's uh, I got all sorts of merch with all sorts of sayings on it, and you know mm -hmm. just room six as well. But any mu any money I make from any of the you know that stuff or uh, patrons on Patreon or all that, it doesn't go into my pocket. It either helps me make better videos, or more than likely, it helps me put on um, what I call room six rocks showcases, where I highlight five previous room six acts. I put on an actual show where I pay them. And they come come and it's called a showcase just because you've all done room six. Right. And at some point I will be reaching out to you. I go down chronologically and mm -hmm. I, I, I've only done one so far, so it's going to be a bit, but I'll be reaching out saying, Hey, you wouldn't happen to be available in Vegas at, or wherever I live at the time on mm -hmm. this date. Uh, but that's the plan is to support, put on the kind of show that I always wanted to play. Sure. And I, awesome. and people seem to seem, seem to like the first one I did. So, it all helps the local scene. Uh, and, you know, heck, I wouldn't mind doing this for a living. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Ching. So yeah. this one's a bit of a, con uh, of a longer question, all right? Okay. Who are the Arcadians, and why was the Keswick Tavern their hangout spot? <laughs> oh, my heart. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the Arcadians are... Uh, the group of people that I attended college with. Mm -hmm. uh, when I use that phrase, I'm not just referring to people who happened to go to the same university as me, although you could use it that way. I am referring to the little band of uh, uh, misfit gum chewing freaks that gathered around me specifically and that became my family, most of whom still are. Um, I met, <laughs> I met my wife there. Um, and, and a lot of my, my closest friends, um, my, you know, if my friend Bill, who will assuredly watch this, uh, was an Arcadian and, and just a ton of really important people in my life were Arcadians. Uh, the Keswick Tavern is this kind of like fratty sports bar -y, hole in the wall kind of place in, in the Keswick village, which, uh, was walking distance from my campus and I, um, I played there a lot, like for, for many years, I played, I played music there very, very frequently. Uh, and we, we hung out there cause it was a little less expensive than the other places we could walk to. Nice. Um, <laughs> Mel, Mel says it feels, it feels blasphemous to speak of it. <laughs> it's, it's such a snapshot of a time in my life, you know, like a time in my right. life where, where, where things were so unstructured that, that I could just like pick up and wander. And I, you know, I don't have that obviously anymore. Um, life is, is you, there's, there's a, there's a very small um, demanding little tyrant who insists that my day be relatively organized uh, right. th these days. But, uh, but relatively yeah, that's the, 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 the Arcadians are the, uh, they are the group that saw me through adolescence into adulthood and, the ones that mattered are still at my are still at my Halloween party every year and still come to every big event in my life and were there when my when when my wife and I got married and and you know are there for my kid babe so two one of the, one of the Arcadians recently babysat my kid like that's that's they're my people they're they're just my the, people someone's uh, who is this this is uh, someone's <laughs> calling it calling her the cutest tyrant ever <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> right on. And um, we have we're, we're on to that last question, which I, okay. I kind of already teased you with. So let's pretend we're talking a little you. And sure. this, I like to gear this towards 
really new musicians, the ones who come up and say, how do I be like you? And, you know, how, how do I get to where you are? Which yeah. every singer songwriter, we, we want to get that question, but at the same time, our imposter syndrome kicks in and we're like, trust me, kid, you don't want to be where I am. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you, yes. I really know. I really know. Yes. It's, it's full on. It, yes. Try being a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Hey, uh, listen, the drum, the drummer in my band is a YouTuber. He operates a YouTube channel called drum LCK and right. he, he's running that race right next to you. And, and it's, it's a thing. Um, I love how I'm like going out of my way to plug other people. Hey, go to brightkelly.me and like click all the links guys. There's a merch shop. There's, there's like a Patreon. There, uh, can I say page or whatever? There's a, there's yeah. a money tree here. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Money tree. Uh, and there's there's stuff go interact with all my stuff too um and obviously since i know a bunch of people in chat are my people please make sure you're following uh you're following this homie right here make sure you're 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 subscribing to his channels and stuff because uh Thank rising you. tides raise all ships and we are in this shit together and um, the best way you can support me or find ways to support what i do is uh room six dot shop i got all the little social media there um and um actually I do want to plug something before you answer this question. Go. Forgot. I got a new thing, which if you've, you know, if you follow me on here, uh, you may have seen every so often I put something called Room 6 Radio. Yeah. And it's a podcast, but it's a recorded podcast because I'm not sure. sane. Don't do live podcasting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I do is I reach out on, I, did, I actually reach out on Thursdays, usually or Fridays, to uh, online to various places and say, hey. You got an original local live music show coming up in the Vegas Valley? Mm -hmm. Hit me up. Let me know. Because on mon on Monday night, or on, sorry, on Monday night, yeah, uh, I post or I stream me basically saying, on this date, on you know, on Monday, blah, 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 blah. This, this Here's all the shows. Yeah, you can Tuesday. listen to this person. Here's their music. You can listen to this person. Exactly. Here's their music. It's great. I love that. So that grows the local scene here, hopefully. But what I'm also doing because I'm lazy, is I do like Monday, Tuesday, and then I show, I, I have a featured Room 6 guest from the past for the week, and I them performing right here, which I've got that content already. You know? So, oh, yeah. I just, oh, yeah. here's a song here's a song by them. And then Wednesday, Thursday, here's a song by them, Friday, That's Saturday, awesome. Sunday. And, it, and I, it allows me also to do a little bit of the throwback Thursdays thing where I get to, you know, I'm starting to like recycle see stuff like oh yeah i forgot about them and hopefully i'm bringing more more awareness of my early guests while bringing awareness of what's going on now Smart. um and it's, it. it's like it's it's weird though because like some of them they don't they're not together anymore or that's not the band lineup anymore you know it's been changes so it's always kind of weird to do that but yeah that's I'll what probably i'm doing go through some lineup changes you know yeah. but i'll, ch uh, I'll change good. personalities yeah if you uh yeah that's not that is not on room six dot shop right now i haven't got that up there yet but you can just go to the purple app and uh yeah. look for room six radio cool that's cool that like being said what would i let's say talk to a little you baby man. hey bright <laughs> what is something you wish somebody had told you before you went down this twisted road that is called music Ooh. don't say change your strings you don't need most of the things you think you need right now. You don't need a label. In fact, a label is going to hurt you. Yes, you nine times out of 10. They did. I'm a victim. They stole years of my life and threw lawyers at me and choked my records. Um, I, saw, I, I, I had a, I, there's a thing I don't talk about much, but a major label came at me really hard in my youth. You don't need a label. You don't need to sound like anything except what comes out of you naturally you should be working really really hard to hone your voice and make what you sing and say count and you should be worrying a lot less about things like labels and the business because the business is going to chew you up and the fans are going to save you that's what here. Would, that's what i would say to 15 year old me getting his feet wet Nice. I, and honestly, I couldn't say any better. Um, of course, it is a music business that, you know, if you want to get to where hopefully you are, where you're like, 
this is paying it's it's paying the bills or at least some of them you got to pay attention a little bit to the business i agree but in this day and age there's so much information out there mm -hmm. there are so many like entertainment lawyers that'll work you know without a label being involved at all that'll keep you protected i also um, think that it's better to learn that stuff on the job than to be than to be uh desperately thinking about it. i think so many people are really concerned about things like finding a label and signing to a label and the thing is labels practically don't exist now they're just marketing firms with label or records in the in the title for the most right. part um until you're talking about the majors and then the majors are just a, a mill that's almost never going to be what you need i mean the most powerful artists in the world are struggling to to get away from the major labels for a reason and business you need business acumen and business sense to survive in this in this industry for sure but it's the 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 disconnect is thinking that you need to find or attract a business what you actually have to do is become a business you know what yep. I mean? like my music is the most important thing in the world to me it's also a front for a merch store you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> my, That's how I launder money. <laughs> my music is my music is me hemorrhaging my soul in front of people in the desperate hope that I will connect with them, them in some way. But it's it's also a hook for my community give me money page, the the pay right. <clears throat> tree. <clears throat> um, hint, hint. And and all of those things are business, but they're they're me finding ways to be my, be there for myself to monetize myself to monetize my content and sometimes it's still exhausting and demoralizing and crazy yes Mel pixie you're correct buy the things buy, buy the, the things. things buy all um, the things buy all the things pre-order my record uh it's available on a limited number of cassette tapes and all the cassette tapes come with a digital download card that will get you a ultra hi-fi copy as well so the cassette tape can either be a thing you actually listen to or it can just be a cute keepsake um, and I did that because I can't afford to do vinyl. <clears throat> and yeah, I, I saw that you did that with the band, and yeah. I've heard it's a pricey endeavor. Like, like you got to know you're yeah. going to sell a certain amount. Well, because the 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 basement to get in that door is like thirty five hundred, four thousand um, dollars. Yeah, uh, Kaya, uh, the the record pre order just hit me up. Just just message me. Um, it's not out um, online yet because it doesn't premiere until February fifteenth. But you know me personally, so you can you can friends and discount, stuff. Or, or, yeah, friends and family discount. Yeah, I, yeah um, absolutely. You get the bro rate, right? And if you if you want to be you know a little less impressed than 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 listening to his stuff, you can check out my <laughs> music as well. Um, again, go to you know room six dot shop. There's a there's a link at the top of the screen there for for various things. Please do. Um, I've I've got a, a YouTube channel of my own, my own stuff, and it's uh. You know, it's it's a mix of the band and it's, <laughs> and my my solo stuff. I love the self deprecating like it's music. You know, dude, that's my like, brand. It makes there are sounds. There's some no, sounds. It, it's exactly what I said early on. <laughs> I was like, this is acoustic based rock and roll love songs. Like every <laughs> song I've ever written, I've written on acoustic on purpose. Like if if it sounds good on acoustic, if I plug something in, it's gonna rock. It's gonna you know be solid. Um, I, I, I don't want to write something that I have to have this particular pedal or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If it doesn't yeah. work, if it doesn't work on one instrument and one voice, it probably doesn't work at all. Um, uh, hey, what's like, up, uh, Yeah, I was going to say someone just joined and we're actually wrapping up here. Too. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, I don't know how it works with TikTok lives, whether it, um, it takes a while and then you can watch the recording of it. Yes. They'll be able to go. They'll be able, or you'll get, you'll be able to go um, watch that in archive. I think other people can too, but I actually don't know. Cause cool. I haven't checked. I haven't checked. Yeah. Um, like I said, the last time I did a live was just me having a guitar and, you know, screwing around. I do um, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I need to actually be, I need to start doing some lives of just not, I'm live streaming a, a showcase of songwriters. I'm live streaming, you know, an interview or whatever. I need to start doing a little bit more of the, hey, I'm doing this thing tonight, hang out, whatever. Yeah. Because yeah, people, yeah. people join, people watch, people like. So intention um, matters. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So well, thank you. you and me. say again. I said, I appreciate you having me. This was oh, a lot of fun. No, no worries. 
I appreciate you. Thank you very much for uh, being on the show. Thank you very much for watching everybody and for uh, interacting. Um, it, I, I'm going to, like I said, this is all new for both of us, really, this kind of situation here. We're going to see what sort of content we end up with. And um, if I can put together a, a more cohesive, not these invite boxes <laughs> video out of this. Just crop I, it. I, Just crop that. Just crop I that know. part of the screen. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I know. But then everything's going to get pixelated and you know, it's bad enough it's not in why in, in landscape TikTok. Anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> no worries. But, this um, was a lot of fun though. I, I like uh, I like being part of experimentation. And you know what? I really do appreciate you. I look forward to whenever you can make it out to Vegas. Um yeah. and of course, uh I'll let you know I'll let everybody know when the uh review of your album's gonna post and I'll send you a link and a thumbnail. But in the meantime, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Check out room6.shop. Definitely check out brightkelly.me. Buy all the things. <laughs> and, sir, it's been emotional. Thank you so much. Mm. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> <laughs> you did something. Yay. Yeah. Right. I'll see you, man. I'm trying to move my mouse to, to end the... Th it's all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bounce out of it, though. Here we yeah. go. Hey, good night. I don't want to be with me, do you reach yes? Or if I don't want to see them, the beach yes? Worth it just to sit here in my keister Thinking of drinking and the love that transcends infinity Yes, I've had a couple, but you're missing the point The end is gonna come, it's a matter of when and where And I'd rather be sitting right here, right here with you When the top stops spinning Man, I just need an alibi so I can call off work Hey, I just had a great idea You and me get in the car and we'll just keep driving We'll just keep driving We'll just keep driving Pull up on the ocean just a minute before the sun Just a couple of survivors on the run Just a couple of dreams in the back pocket Your hand in mine and my face in your locker Yes, I know, we're all going out with the bang But I'm tired of battling And I'd just rather hang with my best friend With my best love is in the good songs reduced by quest love And when the batteries run dry And we don't have solar power I'll steal new wheels and stop fan gasoline And you and me will just keep driving We'll 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 just keep driving Dream with a battle light, but sugar, I just gotta ask. Wouldn't you rather make this last? Keep all your forever's cause I'm only here for now. I ain't trying to be a hero, that's not how I want to spend my last days in this wasteland. I want your hand, your hand, your hand. I, I want your hand, I want your hand. On my fires, you and I, we just keep driving, 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 we just keep driving. I want to thank Bright Kelly for coming on this live talk TikTok interview uh, adventure with me. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. Check out the description so you can find out more about where to, you know, see what he's up to. In the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up using the email address down in the description or, you know, comment on this. Uh, other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. If you want to hear music from me, click over there. 
And if you'd like to subscribe, it really does make a difference. Click up there and please don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified when I post new reviews, interviews, and live streams. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.